today we, we go back to the original set of Maxwell uh, equations. And uh, uh, so let's first discuss the, the law of speed action, or, or that is due usually Faraday's. That is this one. So as long as we discuss electrostatics, this, uh, this curve was vanishing, right? That allows us to, to use the scalar potential. But now, really, uh, so let's write it without the C. If you remember, the, the full Maxwell equation was really this one, OK? So it's not long, any longer true that the curve of E vanishes because if you have a magnetic field that is now changing with time, uh, then uh, the curl of E is proportional to this, uh, to this change. So that's a very important uh, uh, new information. And uh, just to, to make clear what that means, let, let's go to the integral form, right? You remember that if you have a curl, that uh, <coughs> correspond to going around with the, with the line integral of this field E along some path C, OK? So this is the circuitation of this vector field. And, uh, and this, let, let me take it on the other side, is equal. So let's take the total derivative with respect to T of the, of the, uh, of the surface integral along, uh, let's call it SC, that is the surface defined by, by this path C. Uh, of the uh, uh, normal component of your magnetic field, right? Something like this. So what does it mean? Um, actually, if you go around with the electric field and uh, you integrate, right, this is the circulation of, of, the, uh, of the electric field. This is also, also the, what is called the electromotive force. That is the, the force that is generated by the electricity in that circuit, OK? So sometimes this is called uh, the electromotive force, EMF, right? You, you know that. And, uh, and that clearly is just the flux of, of the B field. So if you, if you have a situation in which the flux of the B field is varying, either because uh, the, 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 the size of the field is changing or because the, the volume, the, the surface is changing, either one. That's why I put the total derivative, just to remind myself that even if I have a constant, for instance, let's take a well, OK, even if I have a constant B field, but I'm changing the, the, the surface, Right? I'm changing the flux. And therefore, when I take the derivative, I get something that is not zero. And therefore, I induce some uh, electric force. Right? In fact, this is the most common situation in which uh, actually the B field is constant, but you are changing. You know, in most of the devices to produce uh, a, a, a difference in potential to generate electricity, what you do is, is you're not varying the magnetic field. You're varying the, the the flux of the magnetic field by varying the area intercepted by this constant magnetic field. For instance, let's take, a, you, you take a, a constant magnetic field and I, I draw, so uh, the, the, the force line of this B field are coming out of the blackboard, right? So I put just a, okay, so these are many, it is constant uh, in size and also it's constant everywhere. Then you take a wire, right, something like this. Uh, you, 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 you let this wire go across. Uh, and you close this circuit by, by, by some uh, metallic wire, a bridge, a metallic bridge closing this circuit, OK? So if you call W this distance and, uh, and say L, this one here, uh, 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 and then you start pulling this uh, bridge this way, OK, with a certain velocity. So these are the force line 
of B. So you see that uh, the B field is constant, is uniform, but uh, I'm changing the flux because I'm pulling this bridge uh, along, so I'm changing the area here. So I, I can immediately compute the, the, the how much uh, the, uh, this electromotive force induced by the change in flux is because uh, you see that uh, uh, what is the flux here? Well, I call W this and uh, uh, L it be uniform. So the flux for fixed uh, um, uh, for fixed uh, at the initial moment is just W L times the the uh, the length of the uh, of the B field. But now I'm pulling this away, so uh, essentially the change here is going to be what? The WB are constant because this, this width is constant, the B is uniform, so the only thing is changing is this length, so the derivative is going to change with this, uh, with this, uh, 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 with this, uh. so in other words, the velocity, right? We w the velocity with width. I'm, I'm pulling this bridge across there. So, in a re region in which I have a, a, a change in flux of the B field, I found uh, uh, that electric fields are generated. You see, you, as you start out with zero electric field, but just because then uh, you are changing you're just pulling this, you induce an electromotive force, so you end up with an electric current going around. And if you have an electric current, that means there is some electric field that is pushing. Now, this is not a, a far-fetched, uh, this is the basis of, uh, of our civilization in a way, right? Because uh, this is how we produce electricity. So light, uh, the computer, everything. is pr Originally somewhere, you produce it this way. You know, like, uh, well, there are many ways to produce electricity, but uh, this uh, changing of the flux of a constant magnetic field is the main uh, uh, production uh, line. And uh, uh, I have uh, here an exercise immediately uh, through how, how you, you, you can compute the, uh, how much uh, uh, electricity is generated by uh, an electric generator, right? Electric generator is just the a, a wire like this, and then uh, you make it turn in a magnetic field. So because it's turning, the flux is changing. So it's similar to this one, but just you change the, the, the cross section of your circuit, and in this way you generate an electric force, an electric, yeah, some electric current. So this was the first uh, 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 completion. I mean, uh, we, we, we started out with this Maxwell equation, now we, we wrote the full Maxwell equation, so this completes uh, the, this uh, original equation that we wrote down, and uh, the physical meaning is this one. So we are going to exploit this in some example in, in a second. And, and as I said, this is the, the general idea, that you produce uh, electric forces by varying the flux of some magnetic field. The other, the other, uh, equation that uh, is left out, right, uh, the last one was the, the one about the, uh, the curve, not of the electric field, but of the magnetic field. Remember, this was the curve <coughs> of B, uh, and uh, we studied, uh, uh, last, last week, we studied the magnetostatic limit in which uh, uh, the curve of the magnetic field was uh, uh, equal to uh, the density of electric currents around. But uh, this is not the full equation, uh, as you know. There is an extra term that we already sort of study in one of the exercises, but uh, it's so important that I want to do it uh, uh, together one more time. So this is the full equation. So this and these two are the two equations. Uh, relevant f for, yes? Uh, yeah, I did, thank you. Um, 
So these two are the two equations uh, relevant when, when you have varying fields. And uh, always remember that uh, it's still true that uh, uh, the, the divergence of B is zero. And that for the E field is this uh, uh, proportional to the, to the, by now I hope you know these, uh, these equations by heart. And, uh, but those uh, we already study in, in, uh, in, uh, within the electrostatic, uh, I mean the static limit, and there is no new information that uh, we, we have to understand here because they are the same equations even if you have uh, things, fields changing in time. But here we now are looking at these two new terms and what is the physics uh, of those. So really, uh, all these equations, except for this one, were already known uh, before Maxwell, before Maxwell wrote uh, uh, his equations. Uh, in fact, you see, this, this was essentially uh, studied by Faraday, and this too, okay, this is essentially Coulomb law, we said many times. This is the, the reciprocal of Coulomb law that uh, for magnetic, for, uh, for, for m there are no magnetic monopoles, right, so there is no uh, magnetic charge. Uh, ch magnetic charges always come in, in pairs, essentially, because uh, the magnetic field is generated by current, not by, by, by charges, magnetic, whatever that magnetic charge is. Uh, so let me just uh, reiterate uh, uh, how Maxwell identified this term, and the way is, is like you did in one of the exercises is just that uh, without this term, uh, if you consider just the, the original equation, this one, right, and you take the divergence of both sides, right, so that you get here uh, the divergence of C square curve B, and on the other side, uh, um, you, you get the divergence of J, right? One over epsilon, the divergence of J. Now, the divergence of a curl, right, remember, is just zero. So from this very simple, that I believe is what Maxwell actually did. I mean, he, he just took the divergence and realized that uh, if this is true because of the property of the curl of a vector, the left-hand side vanishes, therefore the right-hand side vanishes as well, but that implies that the divergence of J is equal to zero, okay, and that's okay, as long as uh, you have a, a static situation, but, uh, 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 but uh, if you allow uh, changes in your charge density, you know that this is the, the correct uh, uh, equation of continuity. That is just uh, another way of saying that the charge is conserved because you understand this equation is just, uh, well, it's called continuity because it's true for any flux. I mean, if you have water, this is true for water. If this is the density of, of water in, in your faucet, uh, if you see that uh, you know, the, the, the amount of water is changing, that's because it's flowing out from somewhere. Or if it's increasing, it's flowing in. So the flow in or out or whatever is quantified by the divergence. Remember that uh, you can always go to the integral over the surface, and this uh, will give you uh, so the current coming out. And of course, inside you have a certain uh, density of charge or density of matter or whatever. And if that is changing, the two are related by this because uh, otherwise uh, somewhere you have a destruction of charge or, or of matter or whatever, or fluid or whatever that is. So this is the equation of continuity. And, and uh, as I said uh, the first time we, we discussed it, it's a local conservation, right? Because really it means that uh, uh, one charge that is moving out it really goes across this uh, surface. It's not that, that you destroy the charge here and create another one equal far away. That still will give you, it will still tell you that the total charge, say the total derivative is equal to zero, that it doesn't change, right? But uh, it will not tell you this. This is stronger than this, okay? 
Anyway, so you see this is equal to zero, but really it should be equal to this term here. So uh, this was the problem. And if you add this term, what happened? That you have a new term, an extra term, that is the divergence of d e d t, right? So as usual, we can uh, switch those around, assuming that everything is OK. And of course, the divergence of e is this, uh, is this thing here, right? So you get 1 over epsilon d rho dt. So now 1 over epsilon naught d divergence of j is equal 1 over epsilon. Uh, I think here there is a, right? A minus sign. And uh, oh, is plus? No. Uh, Ah, because it, it's on the same side, OK. So it, it does matter, sorry. And so indeed, you get uh, this one here. So in this case, it's written like this. So I just check. Yes. This is uh, two, two value plus and plus each on this, even on plus and plus? Even if it's not? Yeah, this, this is in fact is when uh, it's this changing. With this one. Yeah. yeah, this is always true. I mean, if we, if we do it like I mean, this, this, that this, this is equal to zero? No, the, 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 can, okay, the divergence of J is zero, yeah. The divergence of okay. this. Is zero, even if the, the charge uh, base is not, uh, is not value this time. I mean, there are cases. This is zero if uh, the the density of charge is not changing. I mean, yeah, but I, even if it is changing, it can be zero. So if we if we take uh, the the volume to be large, like large, and then large meaning. I mean, uh, at which uh, the effect of the electric field or something is, is zero. I'm not sure I follow you. I mean, this I mean, it's like this. I mean, it's really. I, if if this if this is constant, then uh, that means that nothing is going out or nothing is coming in. So then it's okay. I, that means that if I t you take the surface integral of this j, it gives you zero. So it's true that divergence is zero, but otherwise it's not. Like if we take the surface to be uh, at infinity, then well, the infinity that's a very difficult thing to and just uh, just let's say. No, but if it's an infinity, it's flowing where? I mean, if it's an infinity, it's not. I mean, there is no place to to flow out from, right? That it means that I have included everything. I, if you do that, uh, then uh, okay, uh, yes. But uh, don't uh, think locally, right? I mean, think locally. This is a, it's a powerful statement about this fact that uh, if this is changing locally in point X, uh, that means some, something is coming out or something is going in. OK, but this we already knew. And by the way, th that means that the equation of continuity, is it follows now from Maxwell uh, equations, right? That's nice. So what is left? Uh, Ah, this, it has a name, maybe displacement is current. Uh, okay. It's, it's really, you know, it, it's what, so it seems like a, a detail, but this is really the terms that allow the solution of Maxwell equation uh, to produce the electromagnetic waves, right? Because you see that complements this. If you have a varying B fields, then you induce a, a, an electric field. But then if the, you have a, a varying electric field, then you produce a magnetic field, and so on and so forth. And then you start seeing all these waves produced by oscillating electrons, right? OK, so it's really the beginning. In fact, that was the next thing, the next big contribution by Maxwell uh, beside writing the correct equations, uh, was to, to, to solve in, in some conditions under some assumptions these equations and show that, in fact, uh, 
uh, they had solutions that they were waves. And not just any waves, as we will see, but uh, light waves moving with a speed that was controlled by this, uh, uh, how is it? Like this, right? By that explains how come that these two, I mean, in principle, completely unrelated uh, properties of matter is, are linked through the equations uh, to the speed of light. And I mean, up to now, we haven't seen any light, right? We are just talking about charges, magnetic stuff moving around, but uh, uh, th there is no light here. I mean, you, you really need to, to study f a little more these equations to, to, start, uh, to see that uh, uh, they actually include light. But uh, we are not ready for that yet. Well, actually, we are, but I have to cover some uh, other materials that you may uh, need to know, like uh, as we went through electrostatic and magnetostatic, that, I mean, they are not essential to the understanding of the Maxwell equations. They are just limiting cases. But nevertheless, uh, they belong to the common knowledge of all physicists, so you must know them as well. Uh, so let's go back for a second to, to Faraday's law. And as I said, if you, if you make something that uh, intercepts a variable amount of B field, then you induce some electromotive force. And the standard thing that you, uh, uh, so this is the exercise, so homework for Monday. Uh, uh, this is taken from the, the same book where I'm taking most of these exercises. So, and uh, so first try and solve them if you can. Go to. Did you find a copy of that book? I assume yes. Because I tried to check them all out from the library, but clearly one was not there. So now they are asking me to return the copies. The library wrote to me asking to return the copy because somebody that I guess some of you wants the book. But of course, I'm not returning the book <laughs> until I'm finished. So, but okay, but it's it's okay. I mean, I mean, I, I, it's no secret. I mean, uh, it's not something. <laughs> it's common knowledge. But uh, uh, first, try really for your own good. Try to solve it, and then only if you're stuck, right, go to the book and see the solution. So, if you go to that book, you see that uh, the simplest. Uh, uh, gizmo that you can define is something like this, right? You have two wires going around. I, I'm not very good at something like this, right? Two wires like this. Uh, you connect here with a circuit. You know that uh, when you draw this, it's like a resistance. So this is a circuit across which you can measure some uh, uh, potential, electric potential. And if you have here some uh, constant ma magnetic field, it's like the one I draw there. But this is more realistic, right? Because it's not very practical to pull a, a wire. Up. But it's very simple to have these things turn around with a certain uh, angular velocity omega. And, and you understand that as this thing turns around, it intersects a, a variable uh, surface, right? So uh, you have that the flux of B, even though B is constant, B naught, the flux is not. Right. And this is really the basic of most uh, uh, electric generators. So the homework, I guess, is about an electric generator motor, as it's called. And uh, so, of course, the question is, how do you make this turn? Right? Because you see, uh, the energy is conserved, so it's not that. Otherwise, I would produce electric energy out of, of, of nothing, right? But you see, uh, to, to generate this current in the loop, you need to turn these this, this things. And how do you turn the things? It's, it means that you need energy from somewhere else. For instance, in Italy, many of these somewhere else are, are uh, 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 you know, they use water. You collect water through some uh, artificial lake, then you have big pipes, uh, uh, then you let the water fall down. So essentially, the energy comes from where? Potential energy, uh, gravity from the previous class. 
So you let the water fall down, it hits some uh, turbines, right? Th those start turning, and by turning, they start turning an electric wire or something more complicated, I'm sure. But the concept is this, and by intersecting some magnetic fields, that generates electricity, and then this arrives to us, and we can watch TV and all these things. So what I want you to try and compute is uh, uh, what is the uh, electric, what, what is the I? So what is the uh, electric current induced if you have uh, this? So let, call uh, like uh, the book does, you call A this, uh, this area, right? So you have a, a B field. This area is A, so it's easy to compute the, the flux. And then uh, remember that I is V over R, where V is the potential, so th is the drop here. Uh, um, and this can be computed by using this uh, Maxwell equation, okay? So compute this I. It's going to be a trigonometric function of sine or cosine of this omega t, right, clearly. Uh, and, uh, and then uh, um, maybe you can also you remember that, uh, so what happened to this current going through, right? Essentially, at, at the end, uh, it goes into heat, right? Because uh, if you have a wire and some electricity going around, it, it's heating up your resistance. So you can compute the, uh, the heat generated and, uh, well, we haven't done this, but uh, probably you remember that that goes like the square of the, of the, of the, of the current, right? So this is essentially the, the energy dissipated and in heat. So please compute also this. You, you have to compute this and then you can compute the average of this by simply taking this, right? So this is going to be a function of t because this is a function of t. So if you take the average defined by the integral over a period divided by the period, then uh, what is, how much is this? So three, three things. One, two, and three. Then on Monday we, we, we solve it together. Is it clear or can I erase it? So that's nice because, I mean, it's, if you understand this, you understand uh, most of the energy production, electric energy production uh, that is so important uh, for many. Okay. In fact, I think... Uh, 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 I want to give you some more exercises on this electric circuit because uh, it's boring to, to do it uh, on the blackboard, but uh, they are nice as exercises. So I'll give you two more exercises on this electric circuit. I mean, they are not really, usually they are part of a, of a more basic course on uh, uh, electromagnetism, so I assume you have already studied them. But they, uh, the physics follow for the Maxwell equation, even though, I mean, when you have a, uh, to build an electric circuit, you don't uh, write down the Maxwell equations, but it's the same. But before that, uh, because, uh, 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 so if you have an electric circuit, you know that you have uh, the resistance, right? And uh, we already studied the other property of a circuit, or, or in fact, of any uh, conductor, that is the, capa the, the, the capacitance, right, the C. And there is a, a final thing that has to do with the magnetic field, that is the uh, inductance, right? So let's just uh, discuss briefly this, f this, uh, this uh, uh, last but not least important uh, property of a circuit. So that has to do with the fact that the, if you generate a, a B field, that uh, sort of reacts on your, on your circuit. So the basics, uh, you remember that we studied the uh, we study, let me see if I can draw this. We study the solenoid, right? This is, is a, it's a wire, okay, a coil, 
with some uh, uh, with some current that I call I2, uh, you'll see why in a second. Uh, uh, and we study, and this has a magnetic field, right, that is essentially constant inside. Uh, and that we already study and we understand it. Very simple way to, in fact, this is the simplest way to produce a uniform magnetic field, right? Uh, so the next thing you can try uh, is to have another wire, another coil going the other way around like this, and this with the current I1, I1. Hmm? So you see now what, what is, uh, so if, if you look at coil number one, right, this generated a magnetic field inside that uh, we already computed, you, you remember, it was one over epsilon naught uh, C square, that is just the, this mu that uh, I, well, uh, if you want to call it mu, naught. And then it was proportional to, so if, I, if you call the number of, uh, of, uh, of turns per unit length of, the, of this coil, so divided by L, the length is L, right? So the number of, 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 of times you, you wind up this coil uh, is N1 over L. Uh, and therefore, you remember, right? The magnetic field is the first example I, or the second example I, I discuss in magnetostatics. If I have a, a steady car current going around the coil, it generates inside it generates inside a B field that has this, uh, uh, this uh, intensity. So that's the solenoid. Now what happens if this B field uh, that I'm generating uh, uh, varies with time? Right Now we, we, we make the next step. I, for instance, I allow the, the, the current that is inducing this field not to be constant. They vary the current. Right, why not? I just discovered that that is going to induce an electric field. So immediately you want to vary this I1. So you are inducing a very magnetic field inside this coil. A and then uh, if you look at the other coil, because you have a very magnetic field inside, it's not just sitting there. You have a, 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 an electric field, an electric motive force induced because of the equation that I wrote one blackboard ago. So let's do it. So the electric motive force in, e, in, in what coil number two, I call it E2. Okay. And it's, it's going to be how big? Well, it's going to be, I, we just computed before, it's going to be proportional to the area of this coil. Let's call it S. And then, uh, I mean, it's S times the number of, of, of coils that I have. So it's N2 now. This N1 was the number of turns in coil number one. So this uh, cross-section S, and then uh, the time derivative of the B field that is going to be the time derivative of this. Now there is an important point here that I should put a minus here. OK, why? This is called the, the length length law, that always there is a minus. When, when you are inducing some electromotive forces, okay, these electromotive forces itself should induce something that goes against the original, uh, uh, um, the original mechanism. That's why we put the minus here. Why? Because otherwise you would have a sort of catalytic process in which you start with the little thing, sorry, you start with the little thing, you generate a varying field, then this generates another field, and then it becomes bigger and bigger without any effort, right? That cannot be. So it's a manifestation of the conservation of energy. Okay, it's called Lenz law. Uh, 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 we, we write it again. So this I can write because I have what, what is B, so I have minus N1, N2, divided by this epsilon naught C square, this uh, area S, cross-section, whatever you want to call it, the length of this wire, the total length of the wire, and then uh, a derivative of the 
of your electric current. I don't know. That is, you, you pick the, how you want to change the current. And so by changing this current, I induce through the magnetic field an electric motive force in the other one. So you see, I start, this, this one starts with zero current, for instance. But because I'm, I'm putting a varying uh, electric current in coil number one, I'm inducing a current also in the other one. Okay? You, you know or yes? I'm going to say you, do you understand or not? Okay, you're tired. So this is called mutual inductance, right? Because you are inducing something in the other field through the variation of the magnetic field. And you understand that is reciprocal, right? I can write as well a, a one here. So if I, you see, this is a constant that only depends on the geometry of your coil. So this is called the mutual inductance. So it has nothing to do with the current you're putting in. It just depends on the, on the geometry of the wire, like the inductance has to do with the geometry of a single wire. And so, uh, so this, uh, let's call it M21. Uh, uh, and this, uh, there is a, the equivalent here that is MI2CT. So this coupled system of two coils, uh, they can induce to one another electromotive forces proportional to this uh, coefficient that we call mutual inductance and, and then proportional to the change in the electric current that you are putting in. Now this can be compared, remember, if you had just a single, a single coil, I mean a single coil, even there in the coil, right, you, you get a, a current induced that is just proportionally to the change in, in current, right? Even if I have just one current, uh, sorry, just one coil, and I vary the, cu the current in the coil, I generate this magnetic field that is changing, and that magnetic field in the same coil itself is generating an electromotive force. And notice that now it's clear why should you should put a minus sign, because you see, it's not that by varying the current you get out a larger current. I mean, it would be nice. We, we won't have to buy oil from uh, anywhere, and we will just you know, start with a little coin and power up an entire nation. But the sign here that is this lens law tells you that you are inducing an electric current that in a way goes the opposite direction than the original one. So it's opposing the effect of the first current. That's why it is a form of a conservation of the energy. Okay, and so this is a sort of a resistance, this inductance, so this is the inductance. So this is the mutual inductance, you have two. This is for a single coil, so that is the inductance. And is, again, it's just a characteristic of the geometry of your coil. You see, it just depends on these, of these numbers, number of times you go around and so on. And uh, uh, So if you want this coefficient here, is the, is the, uh, if, you, if, you, if you write the simplest uh, circuit, right, you have here some volt meter, and you have a current going around. Now, this is the simplest. It just have this L, right, that is this inductance. And then the drop in potential there is just L di dt. So this is sort of, but you, you, I'm sure you already know this. Uh, this is a sort of uh, the basic circuit if you, if you don't have any resistance or capacitance in the story. And you see, it's kind of nice because, you see, this looks like, I I'm saying this uh, inductance is like an inertial term in the circuit. You see, it's like, a, if, if you think of the potential as a force, you see, this is, the, the current is like, a, is like a, a the velocity, so this is like a, an acceleration, this is like a mass. So this looks like uh, Newton's law. And in fact, uh, uh, the, uh, so L times I is a sort of momentum. And in fact, one half 
L I square, if you remember, is a sort of the energy of the circuit that looks very much like one half M V square. Uh, really, it's not just a gimmick. Is is uh, it, it really has because of this sign? It really is a sort of inertia in the circuit. I mean, you you change the the current, you induce out induce a, an electric current in the circuit, but uh, it goes I in the opposite direction. So it is is making harder and harder to to. So having said that. Uh, Let's see uh, what kind of, so we have all these sort of we, w circuits uh, and it's nice to solve them because they are the ideal place where to solve differential equation. Uh, and really, they, if, you, if you remember uh, your harmonical oscillator, these are just variation on, on the harmonical oscillator because uh, as you will discover by, by, by doing these two homeworks, Essentially, what you have are differential equations for harmonical oscillators that are essentially damped oscillations, right? Because you see that you have damping terms uh, depending on uh, the resistance and the inductance, okay? So, okay, so maybe you already know this stuff, but uh, on Monday we saw them together. So first, uh, uh, study the, the, the simplest circuit. So the simplest circuit is the one without the capacitance. So I guess... Uh, you put a, 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 a V, I don't know, something like this. And uh, here you have, uh, so the resistance usually is the, like this, and the inductance is like a spring for some well-established convention. So this is L. So this is the simplest uh, 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 circuit. So you can write the differential equation for this and, and uh, solve it, and then we discuss the solutions, okay? And the next step, uh, so this was one. The next step is when, you, when uh, you, you have in addition to a resistance and an inductance. So you understand, this has to do with the magnetic field in here. This is more to do with the, with the with Ohm's law and this kind of stuff. And the capacitance has to do with the, with the electric field. So if you have a capacitor, uh, a capacitor, so I guess I should put it here. So this is C. Then you have uh, R. And then you have the spring. So now uh, you can write the, the, the new differential equation uh, because you have this extra piece that I wrote there. And uh, so again, then uh, write the differential equation, then we discuss uh, the possible solution. And clearly, uh, this looks very much like the harmonic oscillator. And if you start with this, uh, with the fixed value or something, then uh, or zero, then you have just the, the damp harmonic oscillator. But if you apply here an external potential, like an external force, for instance, try a, an external oscillating force or potential, like a cosine or a sine, then uh, or e to the i omega t, even better, then it will be a, a, a driven harmonic oscillator, right? And you remember the solutions are, are, are those that we already studied. But it's nice, uh, I mean, the same. The same equations come in very different situations because they were, they were penduli or, or, or springs, and here you have a, a, a sort of a electric analog of, of those mechanical systems, but they have the same equations. So if you remember the one you solved for the, uh, for the, uh, uh, for the harmonic oscillator, uh, then, uh, okay, there is no extra work here. That's nice. Okay. So now we are back to uh, the Maxwell equation. So we can do, well, of course, we can try and solve them. That's the, the aim of this entire course. 
study the solution of the Maxwell equations. We already studied some simple solutions uh, uh, when uh, there was no time variation in the fields, but uh, pretty soon we are going to look at the full solutions. But before we do that, uh, uh, we, sh we, we can study something a little bit... Uh, uh, we can learn something without having to know the solutions, and uh, that, uh, like in mechanics, has to do with the conservation laws. So we do expect here, as we did... Uh, for a mechanical system, that uh, there is conservation of the energy and of the momentum, right? Why not? It must be. Uh, the conservation of energy is always true. So even this system, uh, made now not of particles and uh, forces, but uh, it's just made of fields, uh, must uh, conserve the energy and the momentum. So let's see how we, 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 we understand this. How would we proceed uh, on this in this case? Of course, I, I hope that we, we are going to recast this also in the Lagrangian formalism, obviously. So there will be a Lagrangian for the electromagnetic field because that's, uh, I think, is the reason why... Uh, one of the reasons of this class. But uh, in that case, it would be even easier to see that you have a conservation of the energy. But uh, at this uh, intermediate level, uh, it's useful to, to look at just uh, uh, Maxwell equations uh, and see this conservation. Also because this uh, allows us to introduce uh, uh, new concepts that are useful in, uh, in the visualization of the physical uh, of the physical problems. Uh, as some we already, we are, I already wrote for you the energy density, remember, of the electric and the magnetic field, right? They go like the square of the, of the field inten uh, uh, intensity. Uh, so we are going to use that. But let's first start with the, so if, if the energy is conserved, that means uh, I can start from uh, the variation of the energy, right? So this is sort of the power. Right? If you take the derivative of the energy, that's roughly. And uh, how does that go? Uh, it's essentially for, for if you have a volume where you have an electric field, the, this uh, goes like G, G, the density of current time uh, the, the electric field. Right? This is essentially, do you see that? Because uh, uh, it's like F, the electric field is like F, it's like the force, right? And J is like the velocity. So the power is F dot V. So this is really the change in energy that you have because of the presence of an electric field in a given volume. You see that? Or I see. <laughs> Do you see it or not? Otherwise, you have to believe me <laughs> that uh, is as good as uh, seeing it. I mean, if you have an electric, I mean, F, this is the, you know, is the time derivative of the work done, right? So that's also known as the, the power. And you see, it's the same, because the electric field, the electric field is just sort of, for, a ch for take a single charge, right? It's just uh, something like this. Okay, you should define more precisely the limit, but. And then the current, as we said, the current is just the charge times the velocity, if you have just a single charge. So you see that this is the change in energy if you have a single charge. But of course, this is, is more complete because it just, it, it's just a local change due to a charge density, a, 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 not a charge density, a, a, a density of electric current. No, not even that. <laughs> because it, it, of a, or how is it called? Of, of a current density times the value of the electric field there. Okay. So now you see it, or maybe not. So the first question is, wh 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 how about B? There is only, but you see B, B is always orthogonal to the velocity, right? Because again, if you take a single charge, you, you see that uh, the V cross B, right? Is the, the, I mean, the force is like this. So you see, if I take F dot V, 
right? That's a very important property of the B field. The B field, in a way, is not doing any work. It's a really lazy guy. I mean, it's just sitting there. And the only thing to, to get work out of the B field is you have to vary the B field in time. Because then he calls the some entry field, the entry field comes and is producing this. Okay, so that's very important. So the B field is not there for this very good reason. That uh, is not, uh, so just remember the lazy guy, right? Everybody remember that. And, uh, and then you see that this is only all there is to, to, to worry. So now I'm going to uh, do one of those long blackboards in which uh, from this I derive everything else, okay? So I, I hope I <laughs> to do it. So what I want to see is this is, is this is the, uh, uh, how to say, is, is the change in energy in, inside this volume, right? We all agree on that. Now I want to rewrite this all in terms of electric and magnetic field, right? And see what is conserved. I mean, how this is changing in time and as you go out of the volume. So I'm going to deduce some uh, sort of conservation law like uh, we did for the electric current and the change in current. Uh, in in uh, the electric current and the change in density of charge. So let's see that. So first, I, I want to get rid of this J because I want to assume that all the Js that I have around are produced by electric or magnetic fields, right? Because I only want to study the, the magnetic and the electric field. So I use Maxwell equation that uh, they, they, they tell me that J is equal, remember, epsilon naught, C square, the curl of B, right? Plus this famous, actually minus this famous Maxwell displacement curve. So you see this way, I take Maxwell equation, I replace it inside this uh, integral, and this way I have everything written in terms of electric and, and, uh, and the magnetic field. Because this, from the point of view, is not a, a, a fundamental concept. This is the current induced by this electric field. This is always true. Even if you have the current in the wire, uh, uh, through, through which uh, this uh, uh, light uh, uh, work, even there you should think of the electric field producing that. Uh. So then uh, if I do this, uh, this uh, substitution, you see I have this integral over the volume. Let me pull it out here because it's going to be. And then I, I take all, all, all this term here, right? So you see I have epsilon. <coughs> Sorry epsilon naught uh, c square. Now I have uh, this, uh, so I have E, let me pull it on the left, dot this curl, right, is this first, uh, uh, this first term, and then minus this epsilon naught, uh, this, uh, uh, this one here. So I have E d e d t. and I've used this Maxwell equation. So that's already almost what I want because uh, I have everything written in terms of my electric field uh, and magnetic fields, but uh, still it doesn't look uh, uh, that great. It doesn't look that great. So in particular, this, this looks nice. Why, why I say it looks nice or, or bad? Because I know that, uh, huh? yeah. I, at the end of the day, I want to write, I, I already know that the density of energy, remember, um, <coughs> it was uh, one half E square plus B square, right? With the, I guess you want an epsilon naught here and therefore uh, a mu naught here that is one over epsilon naught c square, right? So this is already something that I know because here I, I'm looking at variation of the energy and that is the energy of the field, electric and magnetic field. So this piece looks nice because it's already, you see, sort of the derivative of the density of the electric field. This one is a mess. I, I want to massage that term. And the way to do it is to use this. 
the usual uh, uh, one of those that I gave you, the photocopy uh, of this famous, when you have three vectors. Now it is like the, right, uh, is like that this is equal to B, uh, I can never remember this. Right? So I, I, I take this term and I rewrite it in this form. Why? Because you see this, again, by using a Maxwell equation, right? This is just D, B, D, B, T, right? The partial derivative of the B field with respect to T. So that's fine. So you see already I have two terms, so let me write it down here. This, uh, this whole story, this already is a term that uh, looks exactly like this one that is the derivative of u. And then I'm just left with this term here. Okay, so I have a minus here, a minus there. So let me write it this way. Minus, I pull it outside on the other side. So I get that my original volume integral over the scalar product of the density of uh, uh, current times the electric field, right? is equal to this, uh, this integral over the same volume. So you see this term here, right? And this term here, they are exactly, right? This is mu, this is mu naught, this is epsilon naught, so it's just a du dt, where u is this one. Huh? Um, yeah. Actually, in the books, you will find this. That, of course, is exactly the same if you are in the vacuum. Right? In fact, this is maybe because D, remember, in, 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 in the vacuum uh, is epsilon naught E. And B, I guess, as, as is mu not H. Of course, this is also true if you are into a macroscopic medium. Uh, uh, but then uh, it's not any longer true that D is just uh, equal to, is just proportional to E. Uh, and, and neither is H proportional to B. Uh, it's a more complicated, we discuss it the first week, and, and as I said, I don't want to enter in too many details there. But anyway, I mean, th this is true in vacuum, and this is always true. Anyway, uh, you see, we are almost there because uh, uh, the first, but then I have this extra term plus, because I pull everything, the minus, I pull it on the other side. I have the divergence of this uh, E cross B. So is this a mistake or so this this is correct. It you know the change in energy with in, inside this volume is the change in energy density of your fields. That is exactly what uh, you expect. But you have also a flux, you have the flux of this vector here, right? And this vector here uh, is called S, is the pointing vector that you may have already heard about. And it's perfectly fine because it's exactly like the continuity equation for the charge. You see, you have a volume. And you study how the, so here, uh, if you want, this term here is the change uh, in energy, right? So the change in energy in this volume can be either because actually the fields are changing, right, in size, and so they, they decrease or they increase, and this is taken into account by this partial derivative, or because some 
there is a flux. You see, this is a divergence of this vector. So there is the, some flux of these fields going out or in. And this is quantified by this uh, point in vector. That's really nice because, you see, we are talking about fields, but it's very, it's very much uh, as we did for the charge. Uh, so you have a sort of a flux of this new vector that is the cross product of the electric and the B field. So they c either they go out this way, right? You, 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 you may have some force line. So you compute the flux of this pointing vector, right? And then uh, maybe this, uh, the, the, the value of this field is also changing in time. That gives a contribution to this term. And they together, they tell you how the energy is changing in that volume. One way to measure this is to put some charged particles. You put some charged particles inside. And, and, and if the field, so the, then is the change of the mechanical, mechanical energy inside. So either they move faster or they move slower. Or they, and this, if they move faster, that energy must come from the field. So it, it's taken into account of this term. Okay? All the fields are going out and then it's taken account by the pointing vector. Uh, is this clear? So now we have a new vector that uh, we will uh, use uh, again because the, uh, it quantifies the, the how the you see how the energy is moving in this given uh, portion of space. Uh, and let's see uh, some example. So maybe this becomes a little uh, clearer. So I, I looked at two examples. Well, really just one example. Well, so example number one is sort of this. Take the, let's go back to the single wire with some current, right, some density. Or, uh, you remember this, this one has a, a, a magnetic field, right? So at the point here in space around, you have a magnetic field that goes like this, right? It's tangential to this uh, circle, right? Then uh, here you also have a, an electric field, right? Simply because you have charges here, so you expect and the uh, and the electric field is going to be like that. So that's the general general uh, setup. So we have a wire like uh, there are many in that wall or there, uh, and some electric current going, and then uh, you, from outside, from here, I have a B field going like this, right, if the, if the wire goes like that. And then I have a, an electric field in the same direction of the current in the wire. So in which way is the, is the pointing, uh, the pointing, uh, the pointing vector is E cross B, right? So with the usual rule, on, on you, you know the rule, right? Uh, uh, so in this case, uh, the pointing vector is, uh, is like that. Now you see that uh, uh, because of the conservation of the energy, uh, you have this uh, uh, electric uh, uh, current going ac uh, along this uh, uh, wire. A and as I said before, uh, because you have electrons uh, running into this wire, uh, you, you, you dissipate energy into heat. And you see, w where does this uh, energy come from, right? Essentially, you can look at this as uh, the, the energy is flowing along uh, the pointing vector into the wire, and then it is dissipated by the heat. No, uh, uh, by the field. There is no radiation here. We, we will come to radiation. But at the moment, everything is moving very slowly, so there is no uh, any waves, there is no radiation. It's just that 
because you have this wire, you, you, you put some energy in the field, right? Simply because you have. Then uh, this slowly this energy is dissipated because uh, the wire is consuming energy because it's heating up. Then the heat is irradiated around uh, and then uh, it goes away. Maybe it's even uh, uh, the, the next example. Take the capacitors. I have here a nice. Take uh, our capacitor that uh, is the main characters of many problems. Uh, uh, but uh, I mean, we, we didn't have time to, to, to do that many. But anyway, it's nice because it's a situation in which, uh, so the capacitor means that you have uh, all these little charges uh, on the two sides of this, uh, right? And uh, uh, so here, uh, I'm charging the capacitor, right? I'm, I'm start from zero, then I start charging, increasing the, the charges on the two sides, right? So you know that I'm generating an electric field right inside here inside the capacitor maybe i should uh, draw it like this right so so now that i have some tri tri dimensional uh, so I, I start charging the 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 the, pot the the capacitor let's say that uh, this is a uh, the radius here is a and the distance of this capacitor is, is h you understand that, uh, so I have charges here, charges there, so I have an electric field. So here I have an electric field, and I'm charging the capacitor. So uh, I have a var varying electric field. So I have also a B field here, okay? So this is plus and this is minus. And I start charging. I mean, if, if, if it's static, uh, there is only an electric field, but because uh, this electric field is increasing with time, I'm mean inducing a B field, and therefore I have my pointing vector that again is pointing toward the center. Okay, I can even quantify this because what is the energy of this capacitor? Well, the energy of the capacitor is uh, uh, epsilon naught divided by 2 e squared, right? It, uh, it was written there. This is the density of energy, so I, I have to multiply by the volume, I get the total energy of the capacitor. The volume is pi a square um, h, right? This distance. What is the what is the magnetic field that, that I'm I'm generating? Because I also have a, a, a contribution there, right? Well, I, I have to use c square curve of e equal d e d t, right? There is no, uh, uh, no, sorry, uh, b. So there is no electric current here. It, it, it's the vacuum inside the capacitor. Uh, so you understand that, uh, uh, so I, I do a circuitation. I, I go to the integral form, so I get 2 pi a, 2 pi a, c square b, the B is the same everywhere, so I've, do, I've done this integral. 2 pi A C square B is equal to this uh, E dot, a derivative of E, again, times the, the, the volume inside, that is, again, pi A square, pi A square, uh, but that's it. Not the volume, the, the surface of my circuit. So you see I have a B field that is going to be A two C square E dot from here. So you see that the change in energy inside this volume is going to be the derivative of this, right? So you see that it's just epsilon naught then the two, so I get pi a square, this h, e, e naught, right? What is the point in, the point in vector? Well, the size of the point in vector is uh, 
epsilon naught c square e cross b in these units before I just sort of neglect the units. So it's E cross B, but B is this. So if I do it, you see I have epsilon naught C square, then uh, uh, E times A to C square E dot, that is so c square, so I have epsilon naught um, I have a factor two, um, and what is the flux of s in going in? The total flux is pi a square right uh, times this uh, this here so it's pi square h epsilon naught e e dot so this is the total flux of s this clear or what is the flux of s is given by this right then the total flux so s is pointing inside here so the total flux is the, the I must multi multiply this uh, this area so this area is 2 pi a times h so I have to multiply this by 2 pi a h right so you see psi squares then 2 goes away and I'm left with this. So you see, that's exactly this term here, right? Yeah. Well, here, everything is orthogonal, so I can just take the, the moduli. I mean, you see, they, they are like this. Right, and I'm, I'm I'm looking at the flux through this surface, so I can just take the absolute value of s. That is what I did, because s is orthogonal to the surface somehow. So there is no angle. Uh, the normal is already normal to the surface I'm integrating. So you see, this first of all checks. You see, the change in energy inside is exactly the flux of the pointing vector going into inside. So what is going on? Where is the energy coming from uh, uh, that is charging these things? Well, you have to draw the force line in a way. You see, because uh, it's like uh, you had, uh, uh, no, like this. You had all this force line outside because of the charges. And this part of the field is flowing in or out. As, uh, uh, and because it's flowing, you see, the flow of the field inside the capacitor is exactly equal to the increase or decrease, depending on the sign, uh, of the energy inside the two faces of the capacitor. So you see, that's uh, the correct way of seeing this process. Mm -hmm. No, uh, no, here I use the volume to compute the, the density of energy. I mean, the, in this volume, you have U, the density of energy due to the field. So there I have to take the volume. On the other hand, the flux of the pointing vector is the coming from outside as it crossing this surface. So there is just the surface. So this was the surface 2 pi a h, and here was the volume pi a square h. And the two matches. So as you are pulling energy from the field, 
from the fields outside, they flow inside this, they are producing this uh, larger electric field inside, and the pointing vector is correctly telling you how the fields move in such a way that you have the conservation of the energy. So I hope that uh, So from this point of view, what I, I mean, it's not that the energy is coming from the wire and producing this difference. At the, no, I mean, because you have the wire, you have all these fields around, and the energy is coming from the field inside to charge the capacitor. So that's the correct way of looking at the... No, B comes because I have, I'm charging this, so the electric field here is not constant, is increasing. So because I'm, so that means this, this is changing, so I'm producing a B field. This is the B field I computed. So this B field goes into the definition of the pointing vector. So you see they... So that's the conservation of the energy. And uh, how about the momentum? Also the momentum is conserved. Of course you have to define what is the momentum of your field. So again, well, I don't know. <coughs> again, uh, the procedure is the same. Now, instead of looking at the uh, change of energy, I look at the momentum, right? The change of, uh, of uh, momentum. So that's the force. So what is the force uh, in this uh, 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 local definition? The force is, uh, uh, of course, is, uh, is uh, uh, Lorentz force. But this is for a single charge. So for, for a collection, for a distribution of charges, this is the, the integral over volume of what? Rho E, right? You, dis, you replace the single charge by the charge distribution. And here you replace the velocity with the current cross B. So this is the, the force, or if you want, the time derivative. In fact, I can write this, the, is, the, is, the, the, is, is dP dT like the force, where P is the, the momentum. And again, I can think of this P as the P mechanical, so I put some particle there. If they are uh, accelerated, that means that I, I have this uh, action due to this field. And then again, I, I, I massage these two terms by using Maxwell equations in such a way that uh, this uh, some, uh, some quantity I know uh, appears to give meaning to, to this equation. And uh, so this, this is uh, epsilon naught, the divergence of E, right, this uh, Coulomb law. And again, I replace J by, well, now I decide to use ma mu naught uh, instead of epsilon naught C square. So this J is the curl of B, right, uh, minus uh, the, the time derivative of the electric field. So the two Maxwell equations. So if I do that, uh, I get, uh, so if I do that, so this, these brackets become uh, what? Uh, they become, mm, 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 mm. so no, maybe it's nicer to put epsilon naught uh, uh, C square, right? So that I can pull out, let's pull out epsilon naught. Then I have, so the first term is just uh, E times the divergence of E. <coughs> then I have two terms plus 
so I pull out the So I have uh, uh, so plus B cross B E D T, right? Because I have this term here that is minus epsilon not B E D T cross B. So I, I put B across the cross product is anti-symmetric, so I get this term with the plus. And uh, then I have uh, also the other term. Now I, I put the minus c square b cross b. Okay. I, I, I pull the b front, so I get minus b cross j, and then I replace j by these two terms. I get this. Now, this term here is just uh, what? Is minus dt, the, uh, the pointing vector, that is this. You see, uh, if I write, I want to extract some, somehow something similar to the pointing vector. So I write this e cross b. Uh, so this is equal to this, but there is a term that is not there, so I have to, to, to add it, that is E cross dB dt, right? The, this sum is equal to this. Do you see that? Because you start inside, first it acts on E, it gives you this, then it acts on B, and it gives you, it gives you the other term. And this one, is just minus the curl of E. You see, it's like, a, it's like a game. You use the Maxwell equation all around. Okay, so I can rewrite that uh, with the curl. And also, to make things easier, I, I can always add C squared B times the divergence of B. Why? Why can I always add this term? Because zero, I can always... I can always add it. So, so I have this plus this plus this plus uh, right uh, this and plus this. So I can start collecting. You see, I have the divergence of E. I rewrote it. So if I collect, I get this epsilon naught. Then I have E times the divergence of E plus this term here that uh, that is zero, but I put it there because I have some idea that will come handy. Then I have this term there, minus the uh, um, uh, this one, no? minus E uh, cross the curl, <coughs> the curl of E. Uh, and then I have uh, this term that is minus C square B cross the curl of B, right? Uh, and then this term here, that is the, the one that I extracted, that I pull it out because uh, uh, this is what uh, I want to keep to the end, okay? We are almost there, so just give me five minutes. So by so let me call this part here uh, the rest, meaning that is something that I'm not sure what to do with. And you see that now my my change in momentum, the change in mechanical momentum, is equal to that term that uh, somehow I know what to do. So let me pull it. So this I get dt dt plus this term here that you see I can write as d dt 
the integral of the volume of epsilon naught e cross d right is equal to the rest this stuff here now this is nice because it looks like the pointing vector almost right uh, So I think I define the pointing vector as uh, is always this question with the constants. Uh, I think uh, <sighs> so. You see here you, you have your uh, density of momentum of the electromagnetic field, right? That was this vector defined by E cross B, or in general E cross H, if you want to do it. Uh, so this part here is nice because you see the change in the momentum of the mechanical momentum plus the change into the momentum in the field that this is part here, right? This has to do with the pointing vector is equal to do all this stuff that I still have to understand what it is. But uh, this is, uh, so you look at the pointing vector as the momentum in the field and this is produced by this change in this quantity that I still have to uh, so how can I write this part, the rest, that I'm not sure why? Well, I, I should write it uh, by component. This is clearly a tensor. You see that is a tensor because it has uh, several components. Uh, is can we think of this curve like this curve? This two? No, I mean, this cannot be reduced further, I'm afraid. You see, this is a, is the derivative of a tensor. T take this tensor, T alpha beta, defined this way, epsilon naught. Then I put here the component of the electric field, E alpha, E beta, plus C square component of the B field minus, you see, this part here is like the, so let me put it here, minus one half of E dot plus C square B, B dot, so B alpha beta. Consider this tensor. Then if you, if you take the derivative, so if you take the, the sum over beta, the derivative of the, with respect to uh, uh, x beta, some direction of this tensor, okay, this is exactly the, the, what you have here. Therefore, this term that is missing, the, the rest, what I wrote here, can be written as the, uh, this integral over V, right, of this sum over beta, D, dx beta, T alpha beta, where T alpha beta is defined by this, is defined by this uh, definition here. So now you see that the, the change in momentum, uh, the momentum is flowing, is given by this uh, integral over the derivative of this. But you see this I can use, you see this is like a, a sort of a divergence of a tensor. So I can use Gauss theorem to write this uh, volume integral as an integral over the surface of the normal component of this tensor across the surface. So that's nice because you see, you have here the flux of the, of the pointing vector. And this other term quantify, this is called the flow. You see, these are, it is like a stress tensor. In fact, this is called Maxwell stress tensor.
that gives you the components of the electromagnetic fields, okay, under stress, and uh, the change in the momentum in the system is given by the surface integral, that is the flux of this, of this stress tensor across the surface, identified by the volume over which you are integrating. Okay, so if I call this, this could be the, the P of the field. So this is the momentum of the field, right? The integral of this density of the pointing vector. So you see that the, you see the change, the sum of the change in the mechanical momentum plus the momentum of the field is given by this integral over the surface of the stress, uh, of Maxwell's stress tensor, okay? So that's the conservation of the, of the momentum. And as an exercise, you should try, uh, yes, and write the component of this tensor. So make a matrix, epsilon naught, and write all the components of this tensor. So you can call U, I guess I call it, U, this, uh, this, this guy here. Okay, so um, so we have seen that uh, by introducing this uh, this uh, new vector, this e cross b, we can describe in a sort of economical way both. So you need the density of energy for the fields, and of course this uh, momentum of the field, and then uh, you can describe the uh, conservation of uh, of the energy and the conservation of the of the of the momentum okay and uh, to do that for the momentum you have uh, to introduce this uh, further concept of the Maxwell stress tensor that uh, I mean this is completely s if you take a, a solid I mean or a fluid this is completely the same thing uh, there too you have a sort of a stress tensor Right, I mean, uh, that uh, if you push a, a something, well, this is too solid, but if you push some jello or some stuff, uh, you have component of your push, right, that are described by this tensor, then you have the total momentum of this displacement that is, that is this, and there too you have the conservation of the momentum, and in fact also of the energy. You see, the fact that you have all this tensor, uh, you always have to think, of this electromagnetic field in, in a sort of, it's like a jello, I mean, it's a very strange thing. Uh, um, they live in a very thick uh, medium, right? Because you see, they have all these components. It's not va the vacuum where you have the electromagnetic field, it's not vacuum at all, because uh, to, to understand this field, you need to think of some fluid that is very dense, okay? And this will be confirmed when we study the waves, and you will see that the, the electromagnetic waves are transverse. They are transverse waves. That means they oscillate transversally to the direction of motion. Okay, that's really surprising because, I mean, a wave is, is the displacement of a medium, right? So for instance, my, my voice is the displacement of the, of, this, of the air, right? They are mechanical waves, but this is a very, you see, the air is very thin, uh, and uh, therefore waves are longitudinal waves. That is, uh, there is a compression of air like this, right, in the same direction of the propagation. You understand that? You know that. But the electromagnetic wave uh, in the vacuum is not like this at all because it's oscillating perpendicular to the direction uh, of propagation. So if it's going like this, if I turn on the light, it, it oscillates like this. You see, it's like uh, the pointing, you see, the, the pointing vector that tells you how the momentum is flowing is orthogonal to both E and B. So they are oscillating like this and moving in this direction. That transverse oscillation are only possible in the physical world in very thick mediums. Like if, if you hit something like this, you, you excite a transverse mode that propagates along, but not in the air. It's almost impossible in the air to excite a, a, a transverse wave. 
So that's really something that still is completely hard to understand because that now you think of the uh, uh, of this oscillation of this propagation of the fields in, in empty space and this empty space must have the property of supporting transverse wave so it must be very thick this was the ether that people thought wa was everywhere and of course uh, it was discovered that uh, it is nowhere so what is oscillating I mean it's very in fact what is oscillating in the web I don't understand the electromagnetic wave and I think the more you think, the, you know, <laughs> the less you understand because I it's an oscillation. But uh, for a wave, we, we understand wave if you have a medium. Like on the sea, what is the wave? It's water going up and down, right? And here is air going uh, like this. But in the vacuum, you have just the electric field and B field going up and down. But what is moving? Yeah, but. Yeah, uh, it's the electric. The the yeah, but still, you would like to, to you would like to see something going up and down. But there is just the electric field and magnetic field. In fact, people just do that, right? You know, electric and magnetic field. But <laughs> what, what's going on? I don't know. 